Hey guys, welcome back to Vior Essentials today. Very cool video as we're here to talk about the update of the MetaQuest 3 listing on the Amazon Japan page. As before, there wasn't that much details and now they've added a few things, including some pricing to various different areas and categories, which is pretty cool. So I thought, you know, we could open up this discussion together to speculate a little bit as to what it all means potentially and whether it really actually does make sense if indeed Meta will be using this specific strategy in providing the headset to people without the controllers, pricing it at the moment, it seems, at around 315 US dollars. So let's dive more into the actual page. Now, first of all, guys, there was someone who left a comment on the previous video about this, who let us know that it is also listed on the B&H website. And as you can tell, yes, it is indeed listed on the BNH here. There aren't that many details other than the price itself. There only seems to be one specific thing available and nothing, you know, nothing else to be honest with you. Some description here, but nothing that we don't know about in terms of the key features. So, yeah, so, you know, it seems to be pretty, pretty straightforward, you know, to be honest with you, nothing really, you know, great to talk about there other than, yes, it's listed there. So it's pretty exciting. However, if we go to the Japanese one, this is where things get very interesting because you can see the different categories. We have Quest 3 headset, single, starter set, streamer set, pro set, and headset alone. So this is really, really where I get very, very excited because basically does this mean guys, that the headset will indeed be available on its own without the Quest 2 controllers, sorry, without the Quest 3 controllers. So potentially people with the Quest Pro controllers or who knows other type of controllers would be able to be compatible with the Meta Quest 3 headset. So let's talk a little bit more about this. Here we have the 128. Now there is different pricing on the phone for the Quest 3. And as you can tell, there's also the option to buy it on its own, which we think is very, very, very interesting, of course. So basically 4,400, um, sorry, 44,681 yen is about 315 US dollars, everybody. You know, we have the pro set there, we have the streamer set, we have a starter set. And by the way, the starter set says 51,391. Uh, so let me just uh, go back into the camera mode there. There we go. So 51,391. Let me just change it. 51,391. There we go. It says 362. So I'm not quite sure if, you know, it's the right, correct, you know, things, uh, the right, correct pricing or what is going on there. 55,000. Let me just change to 55,000 here. And then it says 461. There we go. Let me go back to camera mode see the difference there it still says 391 which is less than of course um you know the price in us dollars in terms of what we know um you know in terms of oh sorry in terms of what we know of what the price is going to be now what i'm very interesting to know about is whether actually the headset will be available without controllers because if i just go back very quickly to the uh, headset alone, even though the price might not be correct, or it could be correct, because if you take off the controllers, of course, the price will definitely diminish. But does this mean that people who basically have the Quest Pro controllers will be able to use this specific headset, you know, the Meta Quest 3, without having to purchase the controllers? This is speculative at the moment, but I think it kind of makes sense because if the technology is transferable, then, you know, why would we need to purchase new controllers? It just doesn't make any sense. It's not ergonomic. It's not good for the environment. And what's the point having a whole heap of different controllers trashed away and not being reused or what have you not? I mean, it just, it makes a lot of sense to me that the technology becomes transferable and compatible with other VR headsets. And also, does it mean that perhaps the Quest 2 controllers would also be, um, you know, compatible with also the Meta Quest 3? Although I really doubt it, to be honest with you, I don't know whether uh, Quest will go that far to make it that cheap, that affordable for people. I still think they need to make money, but you know, who knows, it could be that. So Boz, if you're watching this video or Meta, if you're watching this video, it'd be great to have your confirmation or anyone who works at Meta who doesn't want to divulge their name or who they are. If you know the answer, leave a comment below. Also, that'll be really, really fantastic. I will definitely scout for this answer because there is no, 
such answer at the moment in the industry. But guys, what do you think of this? Would you purchase the headset for 315 US dollars, then plus another, let's say, 200, you know, 150 US dollars or 200 US dollars for the Quest Pro controllers, the ones with the camera, instead of the controllers that would be coming with the Meta Quest 3, which don't have the camera. So the tracking is supposed to not be as great because, of course, they will be tracking themselves. They don't need the HMD, the hardware, to actually track where they are in relation to the headset itself. So in theory, they should be much better controllers. So would you prefer to have that option? And also, it is possible that the haptic feedback or the responsiveness of the controllers on the Quest Pro are better than the Meta Quest 3 controllers. It's very possible also. And also, of course, it can... It, it can open to a whole heap of different things, guys. I mean, of course, they could come up with new controllers and then give people the power to choose between different set of controllers that have even more options. I mean, who knows? I got no idea, but I just think it's very exciting. Guys, what do you think about all of this? Leave some comments below. Just want to share this thing, have this conversation with you, just to spark so that together we can speculate and together we can have that debate. All right, guys, until next time, take it easy. Have a lovely Sunday. I will see you in a new video very, very soon. Do go and check out the latest video that I posted, which is basically this one, by the way, which is all about the... Uh, Pico 4 battery update, whether after 2,500 hours, the battery really does last 2.5 hours as is advertised by uh, Pico. They've been advertising, you know, that you can use the battery for 2.5 hours, but honestly speaking, I've never been able to use the battery for that long ever since I got it. So if you have a Pico 4 and you can use it for 2.5 hours, leave a comment below. Also, I'd love to know. Otherwise, go and watch that video. It's pretty awesome. And then also we did a live AMA, everybody, with Valem, who's a wizard developer. Uh, we did this on Friday here and we spoke about AI and how he used AI, AI excuse me, and ChatGPT to recreate a Beat Saber game and also to recreate uh, an avatar where you can actually talk to the avatar in VR using AI. I mean, it's really, really mind boggling. So do go and check out that video. Guys, smash the notification bell so you're notified about all the updates that I upload to the channel regularly. The live AMAs, Ask Me Anything with all the developers and people in the industry. And also, of course, smash the likes so YouTube can promote this video to more people and we can grow the VR Essentials community. All right, guys, take it easy. See you later. Bye for now. Bye-bye-bye.